Well, it will be 30 years this summer since my favorite male voice actor Dawes Butler died, and I've decided to do a tribute to him similar to the one that I did for June Foray. However, I'm going to break this tribute down into two parts. So, in part one of my video, we're going to take a look at six different voices that Dawes did in a single five-minute cartoon. <laughs> Pretty impressive, huh? So yeah, it was, a, it was a fractured fairy tale, and the fractured fairy tale came from the TV series Rocky and Bullwinkle, and it was called The Princess and the Goblins. So, the, the first two characters we're going to take a look at are a king and a prince. Dawes did the exact same king voice in about 90% of these cartoons. And the king eventually evolved in what became known as Captain Crunch for that serial, the commercials. <laughs> Of course, I know those of you 40 and younger, you probably never heard that voice before, but you can YouTube it and hear a sample. Far more interesting than that, this King voice slash Captain Crunch voice, Dawes told me that the inspiration for that was a comedian and entertainer named Charlie Butterworth, or Charles Butterworth. Unfortunately, Charlie Butterworth died at the age of 50 in an automobile accident. As for the Prince voice, there's a little bit of a twist in this story. This time, the prince works in the mines below the earth, and he's not royalty at all. Yet, he's still a young man and a suitor to the princess. But again, 90% of the time, Dawes used this exact same voice for his princes in the Fractured Fairy Tales. Ironically, the producers would laugh and refer to Dawes' prince voice as the fag prince. <laughs> as much as they loved that voice, so they thought it was perfect for their cartoons, they called it the fag prince. <laughs> So let's listen to a few clips of the King and the Prince. One day, the King decided to tell his daughter, Irene, the facts of life. And remember, the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. Have you ever seen a goblin? No, but... Uh... Well, how do you know there are such things? Is that a goblin? Of course not. Is that a goblin? No. Is that a goblin? Why, yes, I believe it is. It is a goblin, a goblin. And the princess ran for her life with a goblin close behind her. I told you they'd get you. But I don't want to be got. Things looked bad for the princess until she stumbled across a young miner named Curdy. And he was so struck by the princess beauty <laughs> that he was moved to poetry. Oh, princess fair, your golden hair upon your head. I see it there. And, of course, that stopped the goblin in his tracks, for he just couldn't stand poetry. You saved me with your poem. Are you a handsome prince in disguise? No, I'm just a handsome minor boy. Brave, courageous. Couldn't you go somewhere and learn to be a prince? Like where? How about Princeton? Isn't that awful? But who should he see just outside the hole but the princess herself? Again inspired, Curdy burst into verse. What a gladsome fine surprise now to see you with my eyes. Oh, 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 oh. I love you more, my lovely princess, than pies of apples or of minces. Well, the guards just couldn't stand that. I really can't blame them. Stamp on their toes! Stamp on their toes! and the goblins fled back into the mountain forever. See? I told you the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. But you were wrong. I was? Sure. It's the love bug that gets you if you don't watch out. Dawes' inspiration for the next voice was a very funny entertainer and a singer named Frankie Fontaine. In this clip, that character is named Sam. Hey, Sam. Huh? What do we do with the people when we get them? Don't ask me. We never got one yet. But sneaky though they were, the goblins had two weaknesses. First, they had very, very tender feet. Oh, 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 oh Sam, Sam, on my foot. My foot, take it off. It's killing me. What's on it? A feather. Oh, I bet that hurt. And the next voice is pretty simple. It's a rather deep, gruff Cockney accent, like a British Cockney accent. I really like this one. This is a spot, Gov. Unfortunately for the goblins, they had chosen to come up in the middle of the royal croquet court. Four! Not the right spot, huh? A little more this way, I think. Yeah, there she is. Grab her. 
But the goblins had guessed wrong again and got Curdy instead. The last two are kind of ordinary. The first one is a goblin who objected to the king's decree in this story. The second one is simply a preacher who is performing a wedding ceremony. Maybe we don't have height, but we've got heart. If you're gonna live on this mountain, you gotta pay the tax. Then we won't live on the mountain. We'll live in the mountain. Come on, all you goblins. And the whole goblin family entered a hole in the side of the mountain and shut the door. And you better be careful from now on, or the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. And in just no time, Curdy found himself in a very embarrassing position. Do you take this earth ring for your wife? So that wraps up part one. I hope you'll watch part two. Most, uh, most of part two will be totally different other voices which Dawes did. I'll be using multiple other episodes and not just one.